Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Pothon programming video log and today I'm going to show you how to do square collision response. So I have a red and a white rectangle. When they overlap, I do that collision response. As you can see, um, the white outline is where the red rectangle should be after doing collision response. So I've got a few things going on. I've got my gray vector here. That represents the vector between the two center points of my rectangles. And I've got this white outline, which is my collision response location. And finally, I've got this white X. The white X represents the different collision regions. And it's just a way to visualize where the collision should end up based on the length of that gray vector. So as you can see, and I noticed this yesterday, so it's kind of cool that I could break it down into regions. But as you can see, if the endpoint of my gray vector is in this left region here, collision is going to happen on the left side of the rectangle. If I move that into the top region, now I have collision on the top. Moving into the right region, collision on the right. Moving into the left region, collision on the left. Now, it doesn't have anything to do with these regions, really. It has more to do, well, actually, it has everything to do with the length and direction of my vector. So if my vector is longer on the x-axis like it is right now, as you can tell, the vector is a lot longer on the x-axis than it is on the y-axis, I have collision on my x-axis. So that's going to pertain to the left and the right sides. If it's longer on the y-axis, I'm going to have collision on the top and on the bottom. Now I'm going to get to the code. Actually, no, I'm going to get to the code right now. I know you want the code, but this is very important to understand. The vector is vitally important to doing the collision response. Also, the direction of the vector will determine whether collision is happening on the top or the bottom when it's longer on the y-axis. And when it's longer on the x-axis, the side of collision will be determined by the direction of the vector on the x-axis as well. So. Without further ado, here is the code. The first thing I'm going to do is define that gray vector. The second thing I'm going to do is test to see whether the y length of the vector is longer or the x length of the vector is longer. Like I said, if it's longer on the y axis, it's a y collision. If it's longer on the x axis, it's an x collision. So if the y vector is longer than the x vector, we're going to do a y collision. As you can see, it's longer, and we're colliding. We're doing a y collision. So the next thing I need to check for is the direction of the vector. Is it pointing up, or is it pointing down? Because if it's pointing up, I need to do collision on the top. As you can see, my vector is pointing up towards the top of the white rectangle. Now it's pointing down towards the bottom. If it's pointing up, I do collision response on the top. If it's pointing down, I do it on the bottom. So this here test to see if the y vector is longer. If it is, then I go ahead and I test which direction it's pointing. If it's pointing down, I set the y coordinate of my red rectangle to be equal to the bottom of the white rectangle, just like you see there. And if the y vector is pointing up, I set the y coordinate of my red rectangle to be equal to the top of the white rectangle minus the height of the red rectangle, which will place it, as you can see, just on top of my white rectangle. And that handles the y collision. The x collision is basically exactly the same. It's just, you know, in the case that the x vector is longer than the y vector, and instead of testing whether it's pointing up or down, you test to see if it's pointing, you know, right or left. But I'll go over that as well. If the x vector is longer than the y vector, it looks kind of like this or this. And if it's pointing right, obviously it looks like this. And if it's pointing left, obviously it looks like this. So this is all we're testing for. We're just testing for it in terms of math because programming, math, that's how you explain things to a computer. So this is the code right here. It's really straightforward, I think. I mean, if you work with it a little bit and mess around with it, you'll kind of get the gist of it. The only thing that might be a little confusing at this point is this first if statement. The reason I'm squaring these values 
is to eliminate the possibility of a negative sign. So right now, my x vector is pointing to the left, which means its length on the x axis is going to be negative because I'm subtracting the center of the red rectangle from the center of the white rectangle. So obviously, the center of the red rectangle is less than the center of the white rectangle. So if I do negative, let's just say the center of the red rectangle is at negative 2, and the center of the white rectangle is at negative 1. Negative 2 minus negative 1 is negative 1. So that's actually going to be a negative number. So even though the length of my vector is longer on the x-axis, it's still going to be a negative number. And if I have my y length positive, kind of like this, it's going to think that I'm in need of a y collision response, which is absolutely untrue. So by squaring this, I keep the relative lengths of the two vector coordinates the same, but I eliminate the possibility of one of those values being negative. So this makes sense. If you fool around with this code, try plugging these values into a console.log and you'll be able to see the different values. I should have actually done, did this for this example, but I think I'm a little past that now because I'm in the middle of recording the video. So I'll leave that up to you. It's really not the most complicated thing. If you just copy and paste this code into your, you know, into your own program, you'll see what I mean pretty quickly. So it's really straightforward in my opinion. This is all the code right here to do collision response. Um, I call this function resolve collision inside of a test collision call, which just tests to see if there is a collision between the two rectangles. And I cover this in my previous tutorial, so I'm not going to go over that. I will go down here to the game loop and show you where it's all being called. So inside my game loop, I just test to see if the red rectangle is colliding with the white rectangle. And if it is, I resolve that collision. And then I proceed to draw a whole bunch of stuff that you see on the screen. So draw the collision regions. That's that big white X that you see. Um, drawing the line between the center points. That's my gray collision vector. And drawing the white outlines around my two rectangles. This will take care of drawing my collision response rectangle. So that's it. That's all the code right there. Um, if you can find a better way to do this, please let me know because I think that would be cool. You could comment down in the comments below like a link that you found or to your own code. I mean, if you have a GitHub yourself and you fiddle with this stuff, I would love to see um, a more efficient way to do this because I'm always trying to make my code more efficient. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something. I uh, hope you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have more of these videos coming soon. And thanks for watching. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.